Oh, well this isn't the video I was intending on filming today. So, yes, I got a state ref ticket in the Miata. So this video is going to be the story about how I got a ref ticket and why and what I'm going to do about it. And I've also got some other little bits of information about the car. So if you care to stick around, it's story time. So, my dudes, to understand where and how I got this ticket, one must first know about the typical car passion schedule. So I do work a regular job, 50 to 60 hours a week, depending on how busy we are, which leaves me just enough time on the weekends to film videos for you guys. So I typically spend my weekend filming an entire video for the Car Passion channel. Sunday night, I will review the clips and do a little bit of editing, and then I do the majority of my editing, staying up most of Monday night to prepare the video for Tuesday at 2 p.m., which I hope it's Tuesday at 2 p.m. right now, because that would mean this video's on time. But this particular video was being a little bit difficult. I went to check out some of the clips on Sunday night and realized at some point I knocked my camera out of focus and was left with about a dozen completely blurred out clips. But that was no problem. I said, you know what, when I get off work Monday, I'm gonna refilm those clips on the way home, which I did exactly that. Everything was finely tuned and sharply focused. So I imported it onto my laptop, checked out the clips, and what happened is when I put the mic in the engine bay, the plug came out by about half a millimeter and none of the clips had any audio and there's no way I could sync up the good video clips with the other audio. This, it, wouldn't, it would be like a poorly dubbed Godzilla video. Gogeta. So I said, okay, there is enough daylight left to get out, refilm these clips again, and you know what? I'm gonna meet my brother and he's gonna help me get some clips from the outside of the car and the video is going to be even better than ever. And it all went downhill from there, my friends, but not in the way that you would think. See, I was just sitting by myself at the end of a dead end street, waiting for my brother to show up, just sitting, texting on my phone, whatever. And all of a sudden, two CHP show up. And knowing that I have quite a modified vehicle, I begin sweating bullets the same way that I am right now because it's probably 105 degrees in this garage right now. So I was like, okay, just play it cool. Maybe they'll just run the plates. I wasn't doing anything. I was just parked. Honestly, I wasn't even planning on doing anything. I was just going to get some light acceleration poles, whatever, like a couple PSI just to hear the cool fluttery sounds. So the officer walks up to my window and he proceeds to say, Hmm, much PSI. I'm guessing that means you have an illegal turbocharger on this car. And uh, I kind of realized immediately at that point that I would be getting a ref ticket. Oh, but it doesn't end there. So he proceeds to say, you know, uh, we, we came over to you because we noticed you didn't have a front license plate on the car and that's not legal. And you're also sitting in a known street racing area with a car that looks like someone would use to street race. Now, mind you, the spot that I was in, I've actually filmed several videos there. I know that people hoon on this road, but it's just in like a nice quiet neighborhood. It's easy to get some shots of the car. It's like a little bit scenic, it's got trees and stuff. Then he proceeded to ask me to pop the hood and of course I just obey all law enforcement. I'm always very polite and I'm always gonna do what they ask because it typically leads to the best outcome and really I'm the one that's driving an illegal car around. Uh, California, which I'll get to that in a minute. So the officer then proceeds to tell me everything that is illegal about my car, which includes, but is not limited to, bald front tires, tires that stick out too far past the fenders, broken tail light. He was trying to bust me for that NOS, but I told him it was a fire extinguisher, which it actually is, I, I don't have NOS. No windshield wipers, illegal engine swap, illegally added turbocharger, allowed exhaust, no catalytic converter, no emissions equipment, illegally mounted camera, which was not helping my case that I was actually not there to street race, which I really wasn't there to street race. And my favorite part, illegal sticker on the windshield, the tiny little car passion channel sticker, since that is longer than seven inches, it's illegal. <sighs> but thankfully, thankfully, he said, since you're so polite, I'm only gonna write you a ref ticket for loud exhaust, no wipers, and no emission equipment, and you can't drive the car until all of that is corrected and signed off. So that is what this ticket is for. And you can see right on there, no officer sign off, which means an actual state ref has to sign this off. Vehicle must be removed from the roadway immediately and may not be driven until in compliance. So where does that leave me now? 
I talked to several of my friends that have had their cars reft as well. There are kind of two major paths to take here. From what I hear, and I still have a little bit of research to do, so if you have actually had your car reft and you're in California, um, shoot me a DM or an email or something and let me know how you got through it, I guess. There are two main options as far as I know. Number one is correct the issues, which would be returning my car to completely stock 1.6 with all emissions equipment, getting it signed off, and then I'll be allowed to drive it again. Or um, just adding all the emissions equipment for the 2001 engine that's on there. I have to remove the turbo and stock ECU and injectors and all that. Get it signed off and I'd be able to drive it again immediately. Or the other option is, I believe you can just pay the fine, it's like 800 or $1,000. That's not the bad part though. I believe I'll have to wait until my court date to pay that fine to be able to drive the car again, and that's two months from now. So there's a good chance I will not legally be able to drive the Miata for two months, which uh, it hurts a little bit. But honestly, I have some stuff to take care of on the car that I've been pushing off since I do daily drive it. I drive it every single day to and from work. It's been very reliable, but there's some issues that need to be taken care of, as well as I have my get Shrike differential swap ordered, so now would be a good time to do that as well. Now, I am still gonna try to keep up with weekly videos. I have another video filmed already about the Miata, and there's some other stuff I wanna cover that doesn't really require driving it, so we'll see how that goes, and maybe I'll do a couple motorcycles videos for all you guys to hate on so anyways let's let's talk about California I can already hear all the comments ringing about how dumb I am for driving an illegally modified car on the street that I know has illegal mods on it blah 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 let me tell you something okay people outside of California mostly what you hear from them is oh California they're communists you can't do anything to your cars there but the people inside California with modified cars say things like, oh, California, they're communists. You can't do anything to your cars there. Hmm. Yeah, it's pretty much true. But let me say this, California has a large car community, huge. There's tons of modified cars here and every single one of them, for the most part, is illegal. They have illegal mods on them. Anybody could get reft at any time. And basically, people here refer to getting reft and getting fix-it tickets as the modified car tax, which is true. Honestly, I'm not surprised at all I got a reft ticket. I am surprised that it took this long to get one. It does suck the amount of money that it costs to get it fixed or the amount of work it costs to return the car back to stock. Again, I don't really know what I'm doing yet, but it's just part of the game. Everybody knows that it could happen to them and it's just part of the risk you take and honestly, it's worth it to me. I've been able to put 70,000 miles on that car since I bought it and I haven't had any trouble yet. I got one speeding ticket in it, but never been pulled over for any sort of illegal modifications or anything. So honestly, I think I've been really lucky to be able to enjoy that car for this long. And I do plan on taking care of this the right way. And if I can't drive the car for two months, it is what it is. Like I said, I got plenty of work to do on it. But anyways, let me know what troubles you guys have been in with your cars down in the comments section. I'd love to hear about it because honestly, I'm pretty bummed right now between not being able to drive my car and the fact that I still wasn't able to get the clips to finish today's video so yeah I'm just I'm just sad I'm gonna go drink a monster and uh, try to forget about it for a while and just proceed with whatever I do and I'll keep you guys posted on what I figure out that I'm gonna do oh yeah and another thing in case you watch till the end um, I am going to Miata's at the Gap. And I will not be taking my Miata, but I will be there. Um, and I'll be spending probably a good amount of time at the Fab 9 tuning booth. So if you guys are going there, I would love to see you guys and meet you there. And shoot, I'll just keep you updated with everything that's going on. I will still see you next Tuesday for a video. Peace out, and I will see you in the next one. not gonna have any sound in the real video so all I have to do is hold this part up and point to it and you guys will think I'm just unleashing some crazy data about this thing but I'm really not all I'm thinking about is how much I want a carne asada burrito for lunch or maybe I will talk about this thing and how I'm gonna install it on my dog and see how fast she is afterwards
see this enthusiasm? You can't get this on other channels.